Hey everybody, welcome back to Avic Maker Studio. My name is John and I'm hoping you guys are having a fantastic day. So, while we sit around and wait for this weekend's releases at our friendly local game stores, or if you go to a Warhammer store, um, we've got some news that has dropped recently. The Warhammer Underworld's roadmap going forward for their game has been released just a few days ago. Now, let's take a look at this. Now, if you're not familiar, the Warhammer Underworlds is a Games Workshop's attempt at a balanced game that uh, has basically three different genres, fills three different genres. So we got our tabletop miniatures games, which will use stat cards and dice rolls and whatnot. Then they've got the board, which is more akin to a board game than it is than your standard tabletop skirmish or large scale battle games. And then you have the card mechanic, which uh, is similar to card games like Magic the Gathering or Pokemon. Though in this case, you're not trying to catch them all or, you know, to see if your um, Ember Guard night is uh attack is effective or not <laughs> you know nothing like that the, the cards are used for different purposes uh during gameplay now this game has had issues over the years uh now with over 60 war bands or just at 60 war bands um over the years that warhammer underworld has been available the the rules have changed um, season to season. Um, at least some aspects have changed. New rival, new um, cards for your war bands have been coming out to replace old ones. It's a repeated process. It's really Games Workshop's um, go to for any of their games. They like to refresh everything about their game systems. I would say, well, in this case, pretty much yearly or every other year. So uh, the game has had balance issues a uh, numbers of balance issues of years of where this year this arm this war band and this art war band are the most dominating war band so everybody switches over to them and now it's everybody's playing the same war band trying to beat the other ones except for the people that are passionate about their own niche war band that's not very good but damn looks pretty good um it's been it's kind of some issues that have plagued them and they're Instead of letting that game die, like Atomic Mass Games, very wisely let X-Wing and Armada, and please, those of you that are Star Wars X-Wing, Star Wars Armada fans, please don't jump on me on that. But those games were dead in the water once they got their new edition, uh, at least for X-Wing, when they got their second edition Final, Final Fantasy games, Final sorry, Final Flight games. And once they introduced Squadrons to Armada, the games were... were pretty much ruined and there's no amount of uh, saving those games that after the way that they mishandled it and unfortunately atomic mass games and i know i'm diverging here but atomic mass games took the brunt of that and it wasn't their fault but there's no point in keeping a product that is not profitable unless your games workshop they will keep pushing that out there for those few bit of players for the niche of the niche of the niche players and there's a there's plenty of them out there it's a tiny small minority compared to the larger games but they do love this game and they will just like uh, warhammer 40,000 and age of sigmar players they don't care if every year they have to buy new war bands and new uh, rival decks or card decks they love it now there's not that many out there and we've seen over the years that this game has seen a decline in players and in community activities at friendly local game stores now, now that doesn't mean that in your area there are no players you might have you might be part of that handful of uh stores that have a, a, a massive community of like 10 people we're going to call that massive because anything beyond that is going to be stretching it in a general sense or the overall average and if you've got about the above average man long distance high five that's awesome that you guys are playing that game now could this new edition ember guard for warm worlds be the final revitalization that they need to get this game um, as a mainstay product for them going forward uh, like kind of like how warmer 40,000 and age of sigmar and, and really kind of 
Horus Heresy. Now, I'm not going to say Warhammer Underworlds because this is really their first year of Warhammer Underworlds. And a lot of people have just brought, or not Underworlds, but uh, Warhammer Old World. A lot of people have brought that their old models forward or they're going to 3D printers for similar um, models that just look better than the old school Warhammer, um, the old world. Um, so is this game going to be a benchmark, or not benchmark, but a, a cornerstone game for them? It certainly feels like it. Um, the trade reps for Games Workshop, these are the people that uh, handle the accounts for your friend, the game store. They are pushing. They've been pushing for about a week and a half now, and I suspect until this game, um, until they get the, the stores get their official a nod to go ahead and start their pre-orders that games workshop is going to be pushing this on every sales call i know as a fact right now at least two stores are talking every time about underworlds every time they call say hey here's my pre-orders hey i need to do this order um hey i'm missing this order hey did you hear about warm underworlds we're getting a new edition this year and going forward blah 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 that's been going on um i suspect that they have a quota to meet, um, hopefully a low quota for those trade trade reps. They Hopefully they have a low quota to meet. And if you happen to be or know somebody that is a rep and you can get me some sort of verification on that, I would love to hear that. But uh, that aside, uh, they are definitely pushing for this. Now, this could be the right revitalization that Warhammer Underworlds needs to be able to move forward to be a, um, a cornerstone game for them. It has all the potential to to be there. Now, will it? Because uh, we look at other games like um, Star Wars, Shatterpoint. We look at um, Marvel's uh, or uh, Atomic Mass Games, Marvel Crash Protocol. Just those two as an example of a card game slash miniature game um, minus minus the board game part. Now, if we that's if we're assuming that the tabletop is not considered a board game. So. With all that aside, um, are they going to be able to rival those games like those? I don't think so. I think those games are pretty well enmeshed in. Uh, they, they, they've got their foothold in there and they're dominating because those games are largely balanced going forward. Yes, there are small outliers, but overall they're largely balanced and kind of Games Workshop has issues with balances uh, for all their games now this could be it this could be it we'll know coming this year as uh, by the end of 2024 which is only two and a half months away that we're going to get the amber guard core game the 16 returning war bands out of the 60 so remember that um, two new war bands will drop probably these are going to be the ones that are going to be in the core game obviously with the new rival decks which is the card decks and then going forward if i am reading this map correctly and this is just my guess but that says 2025 going forward this is the year one roadmap now is this first part of 2025 is just the first quarter like so every month we're going to get a new war band and that new rivals deck to go along with it or is that all of 2025? Um, so we'll get one um, per four months. Yeah, maybe one per four months. I don't know. Uh, I think one per month would be a bit excessive. That almost feels like Fantasy Flight Games level of, hey, we're going to be cranking out all this product. We're going to over overflow or overrun you guys with so much new stuff. You just uh, you can't keep up. I doubt that's the way they're going to go. That looks more like, hey, every four months we're going to drop something, which is kind of a weird drop cycle. But we, as we can see on that, um, on this little map here, we can see something just beyond. So that's where I'm curious if this is just a part of 2025 cycle or this is all of the 2025 cycle. We'll see. Now, I mentioned the 16 current warbands going forward. Let's take a look at those 16 war bands um i'm sorry to say and there's uh, there's gonna be little, might be a little confusion here but i'm sorry to say of the some 60 odd war bands right now i don't know how many are viable in play right now but 44 of them are going to go away they're going to become basically legends if anything 
they said that 16 were going to go forward. So if you have one of these 16 war bands going forward, good job. If you want to play going forward with one of these 16 war bands, they've been catching your eye. You've seen them at your local game store collecting dust. Buy the miniatures now. Going forward, there's going to be one of these four box sets that has the four different um, types of war bands in it. The uh, an and I apologize if I'm not very familiar with um, all the terminology, but so we got oh, destruction. That's it. Okay, sorry. Uh, so we got order, we got chaos, we got destruction. I'm guessing that's death is the other one. So each of these boxes will have one of those four um, factions. And the only way to get these 16 current, 16 current war bands is either they have them available right now at your local store, you're able to find them online. Please go to your friend the local game store first, or you're going to have to probably pay. My guess right now is that these boxes that comes with four different war bands, which I think is in a way kind of a good idea because it gives you four different um, war bands to play in the game. But if you just want one, then you're going to have to do something uh, weird to, f to figure that out, to get the cards, get the, uh, the miniatures and whatnot. Because I imagine that based on the number of models that are in these boxes, plus they're going to come with, I suspect, with the cards to play the game, I suspect that these boxes are going to be $140 to $170. If we look currently at the con the Combat Patrol box for uh, the Blood Angels that's going to be released on November 2nd, that... These, these, this box right now has was at 10 inter combat or close combat intercessors. We've got six sanguinary guards and one lieutenant or captain. So that's 17 models for $168 US. And as we look over here, 17 models, we see that the lowest count box here is 16, the highest is 21. I suspect these, bo these boxes are going to be probably at that same price range. So if you want to not be forced to get this maybe even maybe you have some friends that might want to split the box i would check that out first uh see if they're interested in doing underworlds that way you can save yourself uh, a little bit of money or if they don't care about underworlds but you both kind of have some models that a box offers like let, let's say this one in the, the far right you've got some um you've got an orc army you could use those uh i think they're black orcs or you've got an ogre army and you want that ogre or or whatnot uh maybe you guys want to split that box and you just kind of eat the cost of the other models maybe you'll figure something out to do with them find some ways around because you're going to be stuck going forward for that now if you have those war bands already Games Workshop is going to be putting out no longer at the very least as of right now for those those 16 Warbands going forward. They're not going to be putting out individual card packs. The only way you're going to be able to get them is by buying the Warbands of Ember Guard. This is 16 um, Warbands worth of cards going forward. Four Order, Four Chaos, Four Death, and Four Destruction. So you're either going to be buying this all for yourself or... If you can get together with the community, you guys buy one box and you split the cards amongst yourselves. Um, just make sure that you talk to your friend at the local game store and go, hey man, there's eight of us and we're going to go forward buying this box. We're going to split it up. That kind of gives them an idea. Okay, good. I don't want to over order these cards because since I've got eight players, I would need to buy maybe eight of these boxes. Now I can save some money going forward. We'll just get two boxes. So make sure you communicate with your local game store and go, hey, we're already going to be splitting this box. So please take that into account. It's a little bit of a courtesy and it saves them money, which if it's saving them money, that means they can buy other stuff that you are wanting to um well, wanting to purchase so it doesn't waste their money doesn't waste your money and your time so that's kind of interesting going forward that um this is going to be happening i don't think it's going to be as successful as people think or want but we've got it so here's the the part i was talking kind of what i was talking about is that going forward the only way you're going to be able to get um this product or war bands 
uh, for the, the new Underworld is through the Warhammer store, um, a Warhammer shop or the online store, the or lo, or physical location, independent real t- uh, realtors, or if they've been recently available. So those 60 some odd war bands that have been available, um, they're, they're gone. They're, um, they're just going to be dead. As they said, less bloat, more balance. We'll see if they get there with the balance. Uh, but if you're hoping to order from their website, no go. As of right now, War uh, the Warhammer Underworlds has no product available on the official Warhammer um, uh, shop site. So once again, go to your friendly local game store first. Go to your games workshop store second or Warhammer store. Then if that doesn't work, start looking on Amazon. See if they've got it um, uh, or miniature market or somewhere else. Try them last. Go to your friendly little game store first. I'm always going to stress that, guys, because if you want your product, you want your game going forward to be supported by the store, you want space to play, you want time slots to do your um, organized play, you want this to be able to um, be supported by the store and by by you, um, the fans, the community, then you need to be buying from your store. You need to support your store first. Can you go to Amazon and maybe save a, a few bucks? Sure, you can save a few bucks, but what's three or four dollars when more than likely you're getting that same discount from your friendly local game store? Now, on the on that note, as I said, and you're probably pointing out, John, it's not available for sale anymore. Well, two things, two things. They already might have it on the shelf, right? The second thing is that there are other distributors out there that might have it. Um, there's, I can't think of the full name of it, but there's one called, I'm going to say Southern Hobby Warehouse. That's not the name, but it's, I'm just, that's, I'm assigning it right now. Uh, they've carried uh, Games Workshop product. Now the stores don't get as much of a profit margin, so they might be a little bit reluctant or they might not add a discount onto it. Like some stores will add discounts on like maybe 10, 12%. Uh, but they do have; they might have access to it. another store or another distributor is Alliance Games. Once again, uh, they don't provide a massive uh, discount like the stores would get from the trade reps. It's more like going online for a store to go online and order. They're only getting a tiny margin of profit. So just be aware of that. But still, it doesn't hurt to go to your local store and say, hey, you don't have this in, in stock. Can you check with your distributors like Alliance or any of your other distributors that have Warhammer product to see if this warband is available? If it is, please order it for me. I'll buy it going forward. Um, or you're just going to split boxes or hope. hopefully somebody's going to want to split a box. Uh, maybe even on eBay, somebody will buy one of these boxes just for say the the uh, cities of Sigmar Warband, and then the rest of the product they'll put up on eBay, and it's going to be a higher price. Um, these Warbands are anywhere from like about thirty five to forty five dollars I've seen in the past or currently, so I would expect a markup um, going forward because they're going to have to cover the cost, or they're just going to make a, a bit of a profit. Um, especially if the boxes are going to be $168 or relatively within that realm, um, which I suspect they are. GW is doing price increases. There's stealth price increases like the kill teams. We'll be covering that later on in a different video. Um, but they are doing price increases with these new products. And that, that's how they're getting around the, oh, these should have been you know, like $35 war bands. Well, now they're more like $45 war bands with this price increase. So long story short, if you are a fan of Warhammer Underworlds, you want to support it, go to your friend the local game store and uh, go, th- go through all the, I mean, if you're going to take the time to go search on Amazon or, search, or Google with these war bands, you can take two minutes to go, hey, friend the local game store manager, can you check with your different distributors like Alliance or golden maybe uh, phd maybe can you check with them to see if they are carrying this product and if they are can you order it for me go to them first because they are going to they'll, they'll probably get it faster and you're going to be supporting those stores so 
All that said, what do you guys think of Warhammer Underworlds getting a brand new set? Should this game die and go the way of X-Wing and Star Wars Armada? Or do you think that this game is a, a very viable, balanced game that should be heavily supported or even mildly supported by your friend local game store? What do you guys think about it? Especially with new games coming, for, coming out like a War Crow from Corvus Belly. And uh, we've got that wonderful game. I can't think of the, the company that makes it, but Moonstone. If you've not seen Moonstone, ooh, Moonstone is a far superior game to um, Warhammer Underworlds, not only miniature-wise, but gameplay-wise. So let me know what you guys think down below. Is this game a dud? Is it going to die? Should it go to the graveyard? Or should it be um, pushed front and forward, like um, or front and center, like Warhammer 40,000 and Age of Sigmar. Let me know in the comments below. I greatly appreciate it. Anyways, you guys have yourself a wonderful day. We've got another video coming out today or tomorrow, depending on how badly I hurt myself using the WoW stick, um, putting it through some test uh, testing for resin, different types of plastic and whatnot. Uh, to see, is it a good tool to use or is it just a, a gimmick item? Anyways, talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful day.